This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 300 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Brought to you by the USPEA. This is Lindsay McCall from Jupiter, Florida. And this is Regina Christo from Sand Lake, New York. And you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. So how have you been lately, Regina? I've been good, Lynn. Thanks for asking. Um, surviving this wonderful, long, cold winter up here in New York. Um, it's been quite a quite a time so far, and I know a lot of people probably listening can relate to it if they're not in sunny Florida. I feel like it's deja vu of last year. <laughs> oh yes, definitely, definitely. We we yeah, it's been uh, pretty miserable for a while, but. I think spring is 27 days um, away, not that I'm counting, but uh, it'll get here soon enough. You know how time flies. And uh, somebody told me you've been, uh, you're have been you starting to work at Dover Saddlery. Yes, I'm very excited. Um, Dover Saddlery has, will be opening up a, uh, a new store in Latham, New York, which is right outside of Albany and not very far from me at all. And I am going to do um, some part-time work there in the store, and I'm very excited to uh, be part of it. And we're we're working very hard this week. So come our grand opening is coming on uh, this Thursday, and uh, celebrating that through the weekend. So it's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to it. How's everything in Florida? Everything's great. Of course, you know, we, we got down to the 35 degree uh, mark the other day, which was quite cold for us. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I have we to get the violin. <laughs> oh. It was so cold. <laughs> we, they were double oh. blanketing horses. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And bundling up the baby. How is the baby? Of course, the baby's great. She's six months. She's finally a little human now, so she has the personality wow. and, and she's a lot of fun and sitting up, and she crawls backwards. Oh, yep, that's the first stage, so get your running shoes on because it won't be long. <laughs> I look forward. I'm going to put her on a horse, I think, uh, not too long from now, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's great, great. Glad everything's going well. Yeah, and we just sold our, sold our house in two days, and we went and purchased another home in Jupiter, so <laughs> we are looking forward to our new place next week. Oh, that's great. That's great news. So very busy, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know if um our listeners know, but um uh, Missy I wanted to you know, on on a on a sad note, Missy Rantowson um had a large fire in her camper, which is more of like a big motor home, um, and her car and she has lost everything now. So I wanted to put that out there for our listeners to know, you know to put Missy in your wishes this week. Oh, that's terrible. I hadn't heard that. Oh, my goodness. Is that yeah. Happen? Where did that happen? Um, in Ocala, um, where she is right now, and um, oh, she's geez. lost everything. She's lost all the memorabilia of her being a coach, as a paradisage coach, and some of oh. her... Um, some of her, you know, things she's gained over the years from all her, you know, the Pan Am games. And um, she needs riding clothes and pants. She needs everything. And um, I can give the address that, you know, people can ship it to if they're interested. Um, it's 653 West Highway 316. That's Citra, Florida, C-I-T-R-A, 32113. And um, she needs everything. So, um, Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Maybe we could get that up on the website as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's that's awful. I hate hearing things like that because it's so devastating emotionally, and then when you physically don't have a pair of you know pants or in this case yeah. crutches to pull on to do your work, it's got to be just an awful, awful feeling. Yeah. Speaking of Missy Ranshausen, will be talking with Todd Fletcherich later, who is teaching Missy's writer, um, Rebecca Hart, 
now, who is a international pair dressage rider, after this message from Vimeda. We all know the importance of deworming our horses, and Dr. Ellefson of Biomedia Equine is helping us make sure we are doing it right. Listen for his four-part series the first week of every month on this very show. I just wanted to remind everyone, if you are due for deworming, why not save a few bucks on the popular Biomedia line of wormers, including Equimax, Bimectin, Exodus, Exodus Multidose, and Equal. You can find coupons and special offers at buymediaequine.com, including a variety of rebate offers from cash to free ivermectin. You can also get up to $2 a dose back for Equimax. And while you're at Buy Me to Equine, get your free horse health record keeper, and you can just download it there. Plus, learn a bunch about parasites and deworming at Buy Me to, that's B-I-M-E-D-A, equine.com. We at the Horse Radio Network all use Buy Me to Dewormers because we want the best for our horses, and we know you want the best for yours, too. Buy Me to equine.com and tell them the Horse Radio Network sent you. Up next is Todd Fletrich, who is not only, uh, he was an Olympic contender, he's ridden some of the amazing, these amazing horses in the world, he's had a lot of international success, and he's also a trainer and mentor, and he's been training Rebecca Hart and her horse, Romani, this season, and um, with the help of his sponsor, Margaret Dupre, they are aiming for the Rio Paralympics. Hi, Todd. Thanks for coming on the show with Regina and I today. Thank you for inviting me. So, we'd love to know how your season has been going. Well, um, my season is fabulous. I love being in Florida. Um, unfortunately, my, my competition uh, season has not been so good because I haven't been out there so much. But my, my students and things have. I have um, a few horses that have been injured or not quite ready for, to compete. I've been very spoiled. I have a, had a couple of wonderful horses in my lifetime, and I don't wish to uh, compete at the necessarily the lower levels because I don't have to. So I am waiting for um, very shortly. I will be out competing my uh, a, a couple of horses, uh, Free Saint George I won and and Grand Prix. But um, this season has been fabulous. My students have been doing well, especially Rebecca Hart. And um, uh, so it's been a, and it's absolutely wonderful weather in Florida compared to Pennsylvania, where my hometown is. So it's great. <laughs> and you were talking there about Rebecca Hart. Tell us kind of how you got involved with her, um, with mentoring her and starting to train her. Um, Rebecca is a former student or present student, I guess you could say, he's not necessarily former, uh, of uh, Jessica Ranzahausen and Missy Ranzahausen. And uh, Jessica is my my other mother, probably my only mother, because my mother passed away many uh, years ago. And I was a working student, then uh, protege of Jessica Ranzahausen for many, many years. And... Um, I, Missy asked me, Missy Ranshausen asked me to help uh, Becca a few years ago for a couple of competitions while in Florida. And I said, absolutely. And I said, but do you think I'm the right person for the job? Because I've never taught a disabled rider before. And uh, I was, so I was a little bit leery, but um, then I found out that it's basically all the same. It's, it's, it's just we're, we're all we're all disabled in one way or the other. And I, I and she she it was a joy to teach. And uh, so I took her on for about I think the first time it was about a month or six weeks or something like that. And then she's come to ever since. Um, and then I that was with her other horse. And um, they showed me a video of the horse, Armani, which is the previous horse, the, the, the horse that she has now. Um, and uh, I loved her. And um, they didn't couldn't find the funds to finalize the, 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 the deal for the horse. And I brought my sponsor and boss in, um, of Cherry Knoll Farm, um, Margaret Dupre. And uh, we Becca knew uh, Margaret Dupre through um, through me a couple of years before. So, anyway, 
that's how we started. Great. But it was through Jessica and Missy Ranzhausen, which Becca was there for many years, and and uh, I always met Becca at, at competitions or or functions or things like that, but never really had much to do with her. But um, but now I uh, I'm teaching her and riding her horse. Well, that's great. Hi, uh, Todd. It's Regina. Um, can you explain a little bit in um, about being a trainer and the, you know, I'm sure you train able-bodied riders and, um, of course, Rebecca. What are the similarities or uh, things that between the para rider and an able-bodied rider? Do you see a lot of difference or is it you teach pretty much the same? Well, you know, if you would have asked me that when I first started teaching, I would have said it was very different. But no, it's not. It's not any different. I mean, we all have our um, capabilities and, and, and disabil- disabilities, and um, I really don't find and there's a difference. Um, uh, I do think Becca is special because not only that she has the drive to do it, um, not that everybody doesn't have a drive, but... I don't know. I, I, I see her and I think, oh, my goodness, I can't do that. That would be just impossible. And then she does it um, because of her her courage or her strength. I don't, I don't know where it comes from, but but I do know that uh, she's been very easy to teach. Um, it Although she does not have the legs for stability uh, or use of the horse, but she does carry two whips, um, which... Uh, I have I have tried to learn to my, I ride I ride her horse thinking of that and I don't I don't I try to use my body weight and I use I use my balance and things like that to teach the horse to become more sensitive and the interesting thing part is is that um, uh, it's really a compliment to myself I think that she is able to get on a horse after I ride it and look even more beautiful on the horse so I I think it's uh, pretty special. Um, the horse is a great bond to her, but I happen to love the horse, so we have a also a good bond. The mare, I, I love that type of mare. She's she's very sensitive, and you would think that she, because she's a, a disabled rider's horse, she, she would be not so sensitive. But actually, she's very, very sensitive. Um, most people could, most abled riders would not be able to ride her because she's so. Uh, sensitive, and Becca has a great rapport with her, and she loves Becca, so it's a, it's really amazing. So, and but I think that that can happen to anyone. It can happen to an able rider or a disabled rider if anyone has the heart to um, bond with their horse. I mean, I, I think the, the whole key is is you don't just go with hop on and and show. You actually have to build a relationship. Does that help? Do you see any? Do you see any similarities between you and Rebecca um, as riders? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that's why she she's. I think that's why she's able to ride horse after me. Uh, I I'm a, I, I'm a fair. Even though I'm a large man, I am very sensitive, and most most of my clients and my teach my students can ride my horses. And I think that um, Becca is uh, has to be sensitive because obviously she doesn't have the strength to muscle a horse or manipulate a horse in a, in a physical way. So you must use more sensitive aids. Yes, absolutely. What could you say to other uh, trainers, you know, pretty well-known trainers who might be approached by a, a para rider um, that the trainer would take interest in uh, working with a, you know, a, a rider with disabilities and not be afraid to do it, but to realize that, you know, they're just like any other rider, um, able body. They have just some different ways to learn and maybe some different things to, uh, uh, to use to help them. Um, what would you say to these trainers to, to encourage um, them to do it? I, I don't know the words to encourage them, but I do know that absolutely, they're no different than any of the other riders. Um, it, it's, it's like myself, I need a certain horse that can, because I have a certain likes and dislikes and my, my capabilities, then I like a certain horse to ride. Becca is very fortunate that she has a wonderful horse to ride that um, complements her. 
Uh, I think it's it, most trainers do. Most trainers of my 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 standard can relate. If it's the, it's the right horse, it's it's nice to teach, and if it's the right student, if they're <laughs> I don't you know you you Becca is not spoiled at all. She's not she's not um, uh, she works hard at what she's doing. She listens to what I say. It's the same thing with any writer. Um, there are writers that are perfectly um, are able writers that are perfectly horrible because they don't listen and they don't they don't they they're spoiled. Um, but I think it's just like any, it's it's no there's no difference. There's no for me there's no difference uh, for me. Um, I do think that. Um, um, Becca is privileged to have a wonderful horse, and but Becca is worked so hard at having at riding that horse and building a relationship that it's special. And um, I enjoy teaching her. And you were talking about your being you're also a sensitive rider, and this horse Romani's a sensitive horse. Can you teach a horse to become sensitive, and how do you do that? Um, yes, you can teach a horse to be more sensitive. Uh, she's she's given it, it was given to her by by birth, um, but uh, yes, you can teach a horse to be more sensitive by being more sensitive yourself. Um, but by sometimes that can that can inhibit a rider, and, and I'm not talking about just a disabled rider. It can also inhibit a a, 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 a able rider because it really is. Um, if they're too sensitive, you can't. Your aids are. Your your aids can be mis- misinterpreted. Um, fortunately, um, Becca does have a seat, so she can uh, relinquish the, the rhythm and things like that. The horse loves a, se- a seat, a nice seat. She loves to have a sense of rhythm. So if you have a sense of rhythm, you are okay with her. And also, um, you know, Becca's horse was, was a Grand Prix horse in, in Europe. Um, most romper horses that are as nice as her, she won't have the ability. They don't have the mind to go back when they're this sensitive. When she, they're as sensitive as she is, to go back and do walk trot canter or walk trot and half passes, the simple stuff. They like to work, and um, Romani likes to work, but also is likes Becca. So it's really nice, nice pair, really nice pair. So also, what what's your thoughts? You know, just by hearing you um, talk talk about Rebecca and her horse and the relationship that she has with her horse, um, what's your experience and what are your thoughts? You know, some people grow up with horses and they've ridden as kids and they become adults and they and they ride as adults um, and have special relationships. Other people um, might not start until they're an adult, and then you have perhaps uh, you know a para rider that never rode as a child and has some type of injury or some situation that makes them eligible to be a para rider. You know, how, how is that when, when you have people who start as adults, e- either circumstance um, versus people who have had horses as young people or more experienced? How, 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 what are your thoughts on that? You know, I started as a young person, but not that young. I mean, I, I was in my, my early teens. Um, it is much easier to learn something when you are younger. I I, I think it's incredible uh, for someone to start at a late age because they haven't grown up with that experience. I, I started as a, a young person at least, um, and I didn't have a disability. My disability was stupidity. I do think it's a, it's a handicap to start at a late age, but if you love something, it certainly can... Um, make a big difference. And I think when something brings you a lot of joy, uh, I, I recently started dancing, um, having dance lessons and, and I'm certainly I'm a six foot two big guy and, and dancing is, was awkward for me. So, but I enjoy it. So something that you enjoy brings pleasure to you and, um, it's worth it. It's all worth it. Yeah, because I think some of um, our para riders, as some of our um, able body riders, don't come into the sport until a little, a little later in the game. And, you know, it's important to, to know that, you know, it's completely doable. And there's people out there that, you know, trainers and professionals that can, you know, take an adult rider, whether they're 
uh, able body or a, a para rider and and do the work and be successful, um, you know, it's completely doable. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. I totally agree. And I think it's, it's, it, it takes the right professional to put their, their, their rider, whether it's uh, an able rider or a disabled rider, to put together the right combination. Um, I, I think back in the day when I was starting, a schoolmaster was lazy and stiff and horrible to ride. These days, there it's not. You can find horses that are maybe not Olympic caliber, but they they do things with ease. It's just like a person. You can find a person that does one can run stiffly or they can run smoothly, and um, it's just a combination. It, it, it's finding the right combo. It's very very important. And teacher, and teacher, because you can have someone that can. The, the big picture versus the small picture or um, shelter someone too much or not shelter them enough. So, yes. Goodness, I didn't, and, uh, you know, I'm just backtracking here, but I didn't realize you were taking dance lessons. When when will you be uh, performing on some dance for us? <laughs> well, I, I did perform last year for the, US, for the USEF benefit, um, and I actually... <laughs> torn a tendon, <laughs> so uh, oh I was supposed to be in Miami uh, in December, and I have not. I still am uh, recovering from an injury, but um, whether it was from dancing or riding or running or Pilates or yoga, whatever, all the things I do. But um, yeah, so hopefully soon. Hopefully you'll see me soon. <laughs> and I, I'd love to know um, what your outlook is on the paradressage program now that you know you probably have seen it around at the tour shows and now you're very involved in it with Cherry Knoll Farm and kind of what do you um, see out of it? I enjoy seeing Becca succeed and I I don't see it any different than anything that I normally do so I um, have a great pleasure of seeing her succeed and be successful and um, she's been so successful since I've been with her that uh, yeah, I, I I I love it. Love it. Just like my other students. And what's next for um you and Rebecca and Romani? Uh Rebecca will be be down on the like the beginning of March and she will do two competitions again and then go back up. She has Becca Becca has to work, so she she has to work up north and I have a horse down south, so um which makes it complicated because she can't stay down here the whole time because she has to, you know, I mean, I'm in Florida, so she cannot stay down here the whole time and ride in that. So it, it makes it a little difficult for her body to, um, she goes to the gym and things to stay fit and that, but the cold weather is very difficult on her body. Um, but also it is for Romani. So Romani can at least be with me and she can, uh, be in the warmth, and I take her places and things like that to keep her acclimated to competition life so that she can be ready to compete. Um, we've, yeah, that's, that's basically our program, but hopefully it works. <laughs> well, so far it sounds like you guys are having a fantastic uh, season, and uh, you guys should be really proud of all your work because this goes to prove no matter what, when you're on the back of a horse, if you have a good relationship with them and you work hard, um, you have success at the other end. So we really, really appreciate you taking the time tonight to talk to us and talk to our listeners um, about uh, your relationship with Re- Rebecca and uh, your thoughts on para equestrian in general. So thank you mm-hmm. so, so much. Well, you're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Today's podcast has been brought to you by Dr. Rose's Remedies All Natural Healing Salve. Developed by veterinarian Dr. Rose DeLiva, the Dr. Rose's Skin Treatment Salve is an all natural anti inflammatory, antiviral, antifungal, antiseptic, and anti scarring product that contains no artificial colorings or preservatives. It works to promote the healing of scratches, relieve inflammation and irritation, promote the healing of wounds, and moisturize the skin of the horse. Because it has so many healing qualities and uses all natural ingredients, Dr. Rose's Remedies Skin Treatment is the safe, effective salve 
that every horseman should have in their tack box. Ask for Dr. Rose's Remedies All-Natural Healing Salve at your local tack store, or you can go to drrosesremedies.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-E-S-R-E-M-E-D-I-E-S.com. Our next guest on our show is Shannon Duick, who is a Grand Prix rider from Canada, and we are happy to have Shannon with us. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for coming on the show with Regina and I. It's my pleasure. Love to have the chance to talk to you. So um, what are you up to um, this season? I have um, a bunch of horses in training, as always. And um, a bunch of clients down, a lot of clients from the Boston, New Hampshire, Maine area. And I'm competing three horses right now as well. Great. That sounds like it's uh, a busy season down there for you. Oh, it always is. But it's it's great. And we're living in paradise. And tell us about your history um, in dressage, kind of your background. I, um, my mom actually brought dressage or was instrumental in bringing dressage to Western Canada. I grew up in British Columbia, Canada. So I was in uh, on it when I was probably six years old. I knew what the word was, but I never liked it. I had very good education and I was, but I was an event rider. I thought dressage was a necessary evil that you had to get through to uh, get to cross country. And, um, but I, I had great education, and I was riding intermediate-level eventing and pre-St. George dressage when I was a young rider. Um, and the dressage was not very good. I was not very good. <laughs> but when I got older, I had an, uh, another event horse after I got out of school, and I got I was too scared to take him to intermediate level. Um, I was mortal in my early 30s. And so I sold him and brought it, brought a young dressage horse and said I could do that at the highest level. And, um, from, and then I never looked back. Dressage became very fascinating to me in my 30s. So I've never looked back. And I've been riding since then, learning from each and every one of my horses. I've been to the Pan Ams. I've been to the World Championships, very happily representing Canada, even though I live in Florida now. There's much more okay. to it than that, but that, that's the con- concise version. Well, it sounds like uh, that was a big uh, stepping stone those young years to uh, to get you where you are now. What's your experience with uh, para Are you um, have you are you working with any of them, or what's what, what's your thoughts on the discipline? Um, you know, I I don't have a lot of personal experience training para riders, although I I just think it's wonderful. My um, my first real experience was when I was still in Victoria, and I have a good friend that I was eventing with who rode on the Canadian team at the Atlanta Olympics. Um, she was an excellent rider. She was a three-day event rider, and she ended up having a terrible um, accident, and she came back and rode for Canada and the Paralympics. So that that was a personal that that was in the beginning of the Paralympics. And it was really uh, personally very powerful to, for me to see Karen come back and and be that driven about um, riding super super well in at in the Paralympics. Since then, I've just been a been a supporter of it. I think it's fabulous, and I've known a number of people who have ridden in the Paralympics, but I have not been instrumental in actually training anybody, and I'd like to. That's the, you know, everybody, you know, the para riders, we have some para riders that um, are paras because of a disability or um, an illness or a sickness. And, um, you know, it's amazing how people persevere through whatever's going on in their lives. Um, And, you know, I've seen a a lot of para riders and, you know, as well as able-bodied riders that just have personal struggles, um, with illness or accidents or something. And, you know, I know you have some experience with that. And, and how is it that you get through things like that and you still just persevere, whether it's something that's not going to last forever or, or in a disability that you might have forever? What, what are your thoughts on how you, how you get through that? Oh, well, I, you know, I've, I've, I've been through a struggle with breast cancer, so I know, I know a little bit 
um, obviously, I was, uh, you know, during my struggle, I was hoping very much that I would come out the other side and be fine, which luckily enough, I think, touch wood, everything's good. But at, at the perseverance thing is, um, it's that's re- regardless of whether you're able, able-bodied or, or have any kind of a disability. I mean, we all have disabilities of some kind, um, right? The perseverance is what gives you have you have a, a goal. And having that goal, I think, gets you up every morning and makes you try harder. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment, which is what gives us, you know, a, it's a big part of our meaning of life. So I think it just gives us meaning every day to have those goals and to be, to be going towards them as well as we can. That's what ha- it kept me going through my struggle. And I'm sure it keeps everybody, everybody, regardless of what our goals are. That's what keeps us going every day. I completely agree. And um, Shannon, I was reading an article in the Chronicle about um, you having a double mastectomy. And I was wondering about, uh, you you had mentioned how you um, were getting back on the horse and it was a little tough at first. What was, what, I guess, what did you go through there kind of, you know, getting back to riding again? Um, I was, uh, I was lucky that I was very fit going in, into the surgery. Uh, so I probably got on, I, I know I got on way too early, but I, I, my surgeons would not have been happy with me, but I was very careful to get on horses that I knew weren't going to pull. And I just needed to get on a horse for my mental, um, my, my mental outlook to know that I was going to be able to ride. And so it, what it meant to me, I was actually quite disabled for a little while. Getting on, getting off, I understand a little bit about challenges. Instead of being able to vault on and off a horse, I had to have help getting off and getting on. Once I was riding, I was not that, I was not too bad, but I also had to be careful which horses I got on while I was still healing from the surgery. Um, so I have a little understanding of of the care that needs to be taken, plus the people, the support, the support that I needed both on the ground and from the special horses that I was riding when I was recuperating. Um, you mentioned the word, you know, the mental part of it and so much of riding and competing, um, whether you're an able-bodied rider or uh, a disabled rider or an able-bodied rider with some type of disability going on temporarily, you know, it's a huge mental game um, a lot for a lot of people. And, you know, could you let us know your thoughts on, you know, how that really affects uh, your life with horses? Um, well, you know, if you have the horse bug, if you have mm-hmm. the horse bug, it's an, it's an addiction. It's, it's a healthy addiction, except for your pocketbook. And um, the the whole mental outlook you have to go outside of yourself. That is a huge thing, I think, that for those moments, it's not just all about you. It's about a partnership. It's about another living being that you really have to focus on. So it it, it takes you away for a moment from whatever struggle you're going through yourself. It's it's the most remarkable, and I, you know, I'm sure you're horse people, you are, um, it's the mm-hmm. most remarkable healing thing that you can do. When I was going through my my recuperation, those moments when I was riding and focused, and that before I had surgery after my diagnosis and all of through the whole thing, which is so stressful, those moments are what is when you actually have to have a have a relationship with this other living animal that doesn't speak your language is. Um, the most healing time when you're actually whole again. You don't have, you can't think about the negative things for those moments. And then, of course, then you get off the horse and the world would come tumbling around you again. But I still find that now every day when I, you know, there's always stresses in life, although I'm not going to that stress right now. When I'm on a horse and focused and riding, for those moments, there's nothing but me and the horse, and I'm I'm sure that's true for everyone, and that's why we feel this magic. 
do you feel that um, you can teach focus for the for as a rider? You know, getting ready, getting ready for the ring. Is that something that we can teach or is, uh, learn? I think it's absolutely something that I try to teach. I don't know if I'm always successful. I try because without that focus, nothing is as good. Not not the most talented rider is not going to get the the best best partnership without that focus. So I try to teach that. And do I think it's teachable? Yes, I do. And one of the things that I, um, you know, you have to learn how to clear your mind and, and, and have a bubble between you and your horse. And the best lessons that I've ever had personally is when it's me and my horse and the voice of my instructor is just coming in and I can absorb it without being focused on that. I can absorb that, but, to ha- but you have to have a relationship with your instructor to be able to do that as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's teachable and I think I try to teach it. I, I, you know, hopefully I'm getting better at it. I, I think the, the mental, um, aspect of riding is probably 40, 50% of the success in the relationship. Yeah, I would bet that's pretty accurate. Um, you know, I see with riders who are able-bodied versus, uh, disabled, you know, the goals are the same. And like you said, goals are huge. You know, and people have a goal set, they they work hard, they, you know, so it's really, everybody's kind of doing the same thing, um, even though someone might be a para rider and someone's an able body rider. Um, the goals are the same, they work hard, and they get the results at the end, which we all know when you work hard and, you know, you have a little bit of luck on your side as well, um, you get yeah. really good results. And I would think that you probably would agree with that from the levels that you ride and, um and how hard you work, that that's probably true. Yeah, I think it's absolutely true. And I, and I, 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 like I said, I, I only know a few para riders and I haven't taught much with that, but I, I can only imagine it's the same focus with, between an instructor, a horse and a rider to be able to come up with, with the harmony that we're looking for in putting together a test and the ability to, to communicate at that minute a level with an animal that doesn't speak our language. So I think it's, I think it's exactly the same thing. And I know that it's magic when it actually works. When you get a new horse and you're starting to develop that partnership, what are the stages that you go through with that new horse? to kind of prepare it for competition and then eventually, hopefully, international competition? What are the stages? Well, for, and I always think for the, with a horse, it probably takes a year to develop a relationship. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a green horse or a Grand Prix horse. Um, you can't, you know, really, really top, talented riders can get on a Grand Prix horse and catch ride them through a Grand Prix test. But to get the relationship where you're seamless and you you can communicate with each other, I think it takes at least a year to have. And the same with a green horse that I'm bringing along from the lower levels. You to, in order for them to learn you and for you to learn, learn them and learn how they react to different situations and in different circumstances and how best to help them. Some horses need to be amped up. Some horses need to be calmed down. Some horses need to have a lot of stretching work. Some horses need to just go to work. Um, So it it does take quite a while to get the very best relationship. And then I think those relationships, it takes another, we keep getting better at it with, with the horses over hopefully 10 years. If you're, if you're with a horse long-term, um, but my strategy, probably one of the most important things with a new horse is to work with them on the ground, to understand it's not good enough to have a groom who gets the horse ready for you, and then you just get on. I really think working with the horse on the ground, learning how they react, having them learn how you are, hopefully, you know, we're supposed to be the leader in this, although it should be a partnership where they're willing followers of us, um, those kind of things, all the groundwork. I do a ton of 
hand walking. I do a ton of work in hand. I do a ton of, I do, I love it when I actually have time to groom. During season, I don't have time to groom my own horses very often, but I'll often go off out on a day off and work with my horses and get my hands on. And what I always do is at the end of the day, go over all my horses with my, with my hands so that I can feel them. They can feel me. We, I, I know how they're, how they're reacting to me. Uh, and I think that's incredibly important. Lunging is important with my horses so I can see how they are. And they were communicating a little bit of the distance, but it's still so much body control, whether or not they're aware of me and they're reacting to me. So I do a lot of that, and it's not just on, on top of the horse. Well, they sound like fantastic ideas. And we want to thank you, Shannon, so much for taking the time to speak with us and to our listeners um, about some of uh, your trials and tribulations and your success uh, overall. And we really, really appreciate your time. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, And you're so welcome. I'm I'm happy to be in any way helpful. and, And I would really like to, to say that, that I, I, I just I had a chance to put a pair of rider and a horse together this year, and mm-hmm. that was the best pairing that I hope I've ever made. And it, it, the horse was in love with the rider immediately, and they came. That that might not take a year to get. But those two are are a pair that was made in heaven. So that, I hope, works so well. And I was so happy to be part of that, to be able to be the matchmaker. Yeah, that's so neat. Right. That's so neat when it really uh, comes together and uh, yeah. you see the relationship form. Sometimes even faster than uh, you would expect. That's got to be really satisfying. Yeah. And I think well, both horse and rider in that case uh, really, really deserved the situation. They, you know, the horse wanted to be there and the rider wanted to be there and, and I'm hoping that we see them in the ring very soon. Well, that would be great. All right. Well, thank you again. And we hope to be able to uh, talk to you again uh, another time on the show. So thank All you right. so, well, so much for your, your time. The Saddle Fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the Shoulder Relief Girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At TotalSaddleFit.com. Visit TotalSaddleFit.com. Well, we have a few shows coming up um, in the season, but we also probably should um, talk about how uh, some of our riders are still out there showing. I know uh, <laughs> um, there's a lot of people in Florida, like Ellie Brimmer. She's she's down here in Florida showing, and I, I know Rebecca Hart will be showing coming up. Um, Roxanne Trunnell just showed in Texas, and there's been a lot of other riders, so I'm glad to see them getting out there. Um, also... There is, on February 27th, a fundraiser for Gigi McIntosh, um, and she's doing a fundraiser and documentary film screening, and it's a fundraiser so she can hopefully go to the Rio Paralympics, and so, yeah, up, and it'll be in Reading, Pennsylvania, so if you have any questions about that, go to uspea.org slash go Gigi. Well, that sounds great, and I hope all our riders are enjoying the beautiful weather down in Florida, and we're, I'm sure they're working hard, and we've got a lot of neat stuff coming up in the near future. So thanks, Lindsay, for those uh, tidbits. 
Yeah, and if anybody's interested in um, learning more about PARA or, or the United States PARA Equestrian Team, you can go to USPEA.org, and you can also find us on Facebook. You can find our show notes and links to today's guests on the website at dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Just search for Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. And we want to thank our sponsor today by Nita, Dr. Rose's Remedies, and Total Saddle Fit. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Network.com.